Okay, this is our last lesson on limits. Yay! So um, what we're going to do today is we're going to find the limits, find the limit of a function involving infinite limits. Either the answer is going to be um, inf infinite, or we are taking the limit as x approaches infinity. Okay, so again, in all of this, I probably am teaching it differently than, than your teacher will, but hopefully you'll get an understanding of what's going on and what happens as, as numbers approach infinity. So what I want you to know is that if we have a constant and we divide it by a really, really small number, what we end up getting is a really, really big number. So we can say that that goes towards infinity. So in other words, if I have 2 divided by 0 0.000001, well, you can put this in your calculator and you'll see that that's going to give you a really big number. If we have a constant divided by a really big number, so if I have 2 divided by, I don't know, um, 2 million, you can see that that's going to give you a really small number. So if you have um, uh, I don't know, I can't think of an example, but if you take a uh, 2 and divide it into 2 million pieces, each piece becomes almost infinites infinitesimal, becomes really small. If I have 2 pieces of candy and divide them into 2 million pieces, um, you just get crumbs, so you get just an iota is left. So when we have a constant divided by a really big number, we say it goes towards zero. So that is what we're going to use to sort of do these problems. Um, when, when we have to use some of the same process that we did in the last video. So we're taking the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, and we have 3 div divided by x minus 2. Well, as I come in from the left, I'm taking a number slightly smaller than 2. So what I end up with is 3 and then I have like 1.999999999 minus 2. Well, you notice that that's going to be 3 divided by a really, 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 really small number. And not only is it a real small number, it's a negative number. Do you see why it's negative? Because it's 1.9999 minus 2. So it's divided by a really, really small negative number. And so we've already said we have a constant divided by a really small number, it goes towards infinity. And because I'm dividing it by a negative number, it's going to be negative infinity. So if I take the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, again, I have to look at this as if I'm dividing by a really, really small number. Because this becomes point, I'm coming in from the left of 1, so this becomes um, 0.99999 minus 1, I'm going to square that. So we know that this would be a really small number. However, since we are squaring it, it makes it positive. So my answer this time would be positive infinity because I'm squaring it. And the squaring makes it positive. This one, um, let's try this one. It's a little different. We're going, um, we're finding 1, the limit as we approach 1 from the left. So again, we're approaching 1 from the left, meaning we're taking numbers slightly smaller than 1. So that's going to give me like 2 plus slightly smaller than 1 would be 0.9999 over 1 minus 0.9999. Okay. which is going to give me some constant. It's going to be 2-something, um, almost 3, divided by a really, really small positive number. So since this number is positive, um, and I'm dividing it by a constant, this is going to go towards positive infinity. And a lot of these, you can use your calculator to sort of check to see what's going on there. You would find that they have what we call a vertical asymptote. We're going to talk about vertical asymptotes in a second. They would have vertical asymptotes, and you would see that as it approaches 2 from the left, it's going towards negative infinity, and from the right, you would see that it's going towards positive infinity. So if you were to graph these on your calculator, you'll see um, what I'm talking, and I encourage you to do that. 
This one's a little tricky, okay? So we have 2 plus x over cotan x. Well, I can write cotan x as cosine of x over sine x. And then multiplying by the recipro reciprocal, I can say this is 2 plus x, not 1, 2 plus x, times sine x over cosine x. And I'm taking the limit as x approaches 0. Well, doing a direct substitution as x approaches 0, what I get is um, 2 plus 0, which is 2, times the sine of 0 over cosine 0, just by doing a direct substitution. And the sine of 0 is 0 over 1. So this answer is actually 0, because 0 divided by 1 is still 0. It's only when 0 is in the bottom that we get infinity. Okay? What I'd like for you to do is pause the video, and then I'd like for you to do the problems on the right, and come back when you're done. Okay, so the answers to the problems on the right are here. Um, this one was the same as this because we're squaring it, so it doesn't matter if I'm coming in from the left or the right, that's going to be positive infinity. Uh, for this one, as x goes to 0, this goes to 0, and then I have 1 divided by a really, really big number. I'm sorry, a really, really small number because it's going towards 0 from the right. So it's, um, and it's positive, but since this is a minus, it becomes negative infinity. In this one, you had to use some trig. And as you get pi over 2, because you're substituting pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. But if you come in from the left, you get uh, positive, am I right? As you come in from the left, cosine is positive in both quadrants. Um, I think one, when you come in from the left, you get, uh, but sine is, cosine is negative as you come in from the left. So you're going to get negative infinity as you come in from the left and positive infinity as you come in from the right, and that's why it does not exist. Sorry. I was trying to think of the unit circle there, which, by the way, the unit circle is important. You need to learn it. Okay, here is the calculus definition of vertical asymptote. A lot of things that you learned in pre-calc you can use, but you cannot justify anything using a, with the pre-calculus answer. So you know in pre-calculus you find the vertical asymptote by setting the denominator equal to zero. And that's all well and good. And you can still do that, but you cannot say it is a vertical asymptote because the denominator is zero. You can't say that. You have to use a calculus definition. And the calculus definition says if the limit as x approaches c from either the left or the right is equal to positive infinity, or if the limit as x approaches c from the left or the right is equal to negative infinity, then c is a vertical asymptote. So that is how we would prove it in calculus that it's a vertical asymptote. Now to find it, we find it the same way we did in pre-calculus. So to find the vertical asymptotes here, I'm going to factor if I can. Uh, what can I multiply to get 8, negative 8, and add to get 4? I mean, add to get 2, which would be plus 4. Okay, we can't factor today. So we get x plus 4, x minus 2, over x plus 2, x minus 2. So we know that x minus 2 is a whole, so it's not a vertical asymptote. And then we know that x is equal to negative 2 is a vertical asymptote. Now, I found it. How do I justify it? I have to say that the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of f of x either is equal to negative infinity or positive infinity. So I need to figure that out. So once again, I'm going to do my math. As I come in with numbers slightly smaller than negative 2, which are like negative 2.001, then I'm going to get a negative that uh, the top would be positive, the bottom would be negative, so that's going to go towards negative infinity. And I don't have to prove both sides, I just have to prove one side is negative. But I can also say the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x is infinity, and I could use either one to prove it. But I have to say one of these as proof. Okay? Secant pi over x 
Well, I know secant is 1 over cosine pi x. And when is cosine 0? Cosine is 0 at pi over 2. So um, x equals 1 half is a vertical asymptote. And of course, um, the multiples of that are true as well. So let's just pretend as if we're going from, um, let's say, 0 to pi, just because I'm being lazy here. Because 3 pi over 2 would do the same thing. So if this is a vertical asymptote, how do I know? I know that because the limit as x approaches pi over, I'm sorry, as x approaches 1 half, from the right is positive infinity. Because as I'm coming in from the right, I'm in the first quadrant, and everything's positive in the first quadrant. And if I wanted to, I could also say the limit as x approaches 1 half from the left of f of x is negative infinity. I don't have to say eat both of these. I can just say one of them to prove that it's a vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes. Now, some of you may have learned Boston, or you may have learned some other way to evaluate this, and that's fine. You can still use that as you evaluate it, but you cannot use it to justify it. So to justify it, it is a horizontal asymptote if the limit as x approaches negative infinity is L, or the limit as x approaches positive infinity is some finite number. So if you're asked to prove that it's a horizontal asymptote, you have to use that definition. Now, to take the limit as x goes towards infinity, um, you have to understand how functions grow. Now, again, your teacher probably will not explain this to you in this way, and it's fine because everyone does it differently. Uh, but I do want to tell you this. If you understand this, this will help you so much in calculus BC, looking at the long run. This will help you. This will, um, you will be a lot quicker in Calc BC if you understand this, okay? So how does, how do functions grow? Well, the slowest growing function is natural log of x. It grows slower than any other function. Um, after natural log of x, we have our polynomials. So x to the 1 half, or the square root of x, would grow slower, of course, than x which grows slower than x squared, which grows slower than x cubed. So just kind of give you a picture for that. So we know that the square root of x looks like this, kind of rounds off. And then, so see how it's growing slowly? It's going towards infinity slower. Then if I have um, a linear function, y equals x, well, that looks like that. Well, that grows a little bit faster. Then if I have x squared, and when I say grow faster, it's going towards infinity. It looks like this, and so it grows a little bit faster. And then x cubed would look like that. It grows even faster. So the higher the exponent, the faster it goes towards infinity. Then after that, we have our e to the x, our exponentials. So e to the x grows faster than 2 to the x because e is, what, 2.8 something? But it grows slower than 3 to the x, which grows slower than 4 to the x, so on and so forth. So our exponentials are next. Then the next thing are our factorials, which you will not see until you get to BC, calculus BC. And then the fastest growing is x to the x, which again, you see these two mostly in BC. What we know is that if a slower function divided by a faster function, that is going to go to zero because you're having, uh, let's say you have x squared divided by the natural log of x. Well, because um, the natural log of x grows so much slower, x squared is just, okay, I wrote that wrong, slower over faster, which would be the natural log of x over x squared. Well, x squared is growing so much faster than the natural log of x that it's going to make it go to zero because this number is getting big, 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 and this number is just kind of lingering. So as we go towards infinity, um, we're going towards, this is going to go towards zero. A faster function over a slower function goes to infinity. So if I have x squared over natural log of x, and I'm taking the limit, and this only works for the limit as x goes towards infinity, 
well, this is going to go towards uh, infinity. And again, you can check this on your calculator. You can graph it on your calculator, and you can look at the end behavior to see what's happening. But if you can um, go through that quickly, it's going to make finding limits as x goes towards infinity so much faster. So when we have the limit, now I have to stress this, this only works as we go towards infinity. This does not work if it's a number. It only works as x goes towards infinity. This only works as x goes towards infinity. This is the only time we can make this work. And my kids do what we call boldenism. So when we go towards infinity, we can look at the dominance of the lead term. So in this numerator, x is growing so much faster than 3 that we say that the 3 is negligible. And x squared is growing so much faster than 1, we say that the 1 is negligible. So it, it would be comparing x is growing, so you have some money in the bank, and it's growing, it's doubling, um, it's growing quickly. You don't really care about the $3 that you lost, okay? Because this is growing so much faster than just having $3 sitting there. So because we only look at the dominance of the lead term, I can look at this as negative 2x over 3x squared. And then as this goes towards infinity, I'm asking myself which of these expressions is growing faster? Is the x growing faster or the x squared growing faster? Or x squared is going faster, so this whole thing is going towards zero. I know, that just blew your mind, didn't it? That I can just say, because I can ignore everything except for the highest power. I know that blows your mind, but trust me, it works. Because as this goes towards infinity, it just, it just trumps, it just absolutely dwarfs um, everything else. So we don't have to worry about that. We only have to look at what's going on. It's sort of like what you did in pre-calculus when you talked about end behavior. Well, that's what we're looking at. The end behavior is dictated by the um, highest exponent. So I can look at this as 3x squared over 9x cubed. And once again, because this is going towards infinity and the bottom is growing faster than the top, we can say this goes to zero. You want to try this one? You want to pause it and see what you get? Okay, pause it and come back and let's see if we get the same thing. So we're going towards negative infinity. So we treat these separately. Remember the properties of limits says that I can write this as negative infinity over one half x minus the limit as x approaches negative infinity of four over x squared. Well, as this goes towards infinity, we know that x squared is growing faster than 4, so we know that this is 0. And this is going towards infinity, because it's 1 half of infinity, which is just infinity. And it's going towards negative infinity, because it's going towards negative infinity. So this becomes negative infinity minus 0, if you will, so my answer is simply negative infinity. This is, a, this is a sweet little problem. We can do this a couple of different ways. Um, one of the things I want you to look at is that we can divide x into both of these. So once again, we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches negative infinity and say this is x over x minus the limit as x approaches negative infinity of cosine x over x. Now we know x over x, we've done this before today, it doesn't matter. These are growing at the same rate, so x divided by x is just 1. And so the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 is still 1. What's going on over here? Well, cosine x, recall cosine x is bounded between negative 1 and 1. Cosine x will never get any higher than negative 1 or 1. However, this x it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So we're either dividing at the most 1 by a trillion or we're dividing negative 1 by a trillion. But it doesn't matter because in either case we're going to get 0. So because cosine x is bounded between negative 1 and 1 and x is just growing and growing and growing and growing, we see that 
the limit as x approaches negative infinity here is zero. It doesn't really matter if it's negative infinity or positive infinity because we're still, zero has no uh, sign. So the answer is one. I, I would suggest that you, again, um, just pause the video for a second and try this one because this is a really sweet little problem. I like this problem. Okay? All right, so I'm assuming that you're back. Now, again, dominance of the lead term that one doesn't matter. And here's the other thing that just really freaks people out, that x doesn't matter either. Compared to x squared, x doesn't matter when we go towards infinity because this is a trillion squared plus a trillion. I know, but that trillion doesn't matter. So this looks like negative three. This, and this looks like the square root of x squared, the limit as x approaches negative infinity. 3x, sorry. All right, so what do we know about the square root of x squared? The square root of x squared is actually equal to the absolute value of x. Did you know that? Because if you think about it, this will always be positive, and you take the square root of it, and you end up back with x. So no matter what we put in, if we put in negative 25 for x squared, we end up with positive 625, and the square root of that is 25. So this is like, this is another way of writing absolute value. So I can write this as negative 3x over the absolute value of x. And I'm going towards negative infinity. So we know that x over absolute value of x from previous video, we know that this is going to be 1. Um, and because this is going towards negative infinity, that that x is going to be negative, so it's going to be negative 1. So we have negative 3 times negative 1, which gives us positive 3. Okay? This one is probably going to trip you up, too. Um, because of this one, we want to do it like this. But remember, um, now we just have 1 over x. We have to do that part first. As this goes towards infinity, x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So 1 over x looks like what? 0. And then the cosine of 0 is 1. So that's actually just 1. Okay? All righty. That is it for this unit. Um, please take a moment. Notice what your homework is. And um, call me if you want to meet any time within, um, I would suggest that we meet, go over any questions that you have before you begin Unit 2. So your homework, you should have uh, limit bingo and limit puzzles for more practice. And if you want even more practice, I would suggest going into the Lost in Textbook and um, looking at the Chapter 1 review and comp completing problems 11 through 21. 25, 31 through 35, 47, 51, and 53 odd. And I think the answers are in the back of the book. You guys have a great um, afternoon, and I look forward to working with you and starting on derivatives. See you later.